Prison Pod Productions, and The Awakening Exchange, brings you inside Death Row, North Carolina. You will hear the stories from the men living on Death Row. These are their stories. The stories are in their own words. Welcome to Death Row. Hi, this is JJ coming at you again from Raleigh's North Carolina Death Row. And I have a little something here that I wrote about my mental health and the things that I do to uh, make the day a little better. I've often been asked what I do to keep from going crazy. And my response depends on how I'm feeling at the time. But usually I respond that I try to keep my mind occupied. But doing so isn't always easy. To a great extent, our lives on death row are closely regimented. Our cells open at a certain time every morning. Meals are roughly the same time every day. Twice a day we have to go in our cells, as does the whole prison, for formal count. Our tablets, a relatively new thing, are passed out and returned at a set time, and we lock down at the same time every night. There's a schedule and rhythm for weekdays and one for weekends. For direct observation by staff, it's not hard to feel overwhelmed. I prefer the least amount of drama in my life that I can get by with. I try to mind my own business. I have people here, guys on the road, that I'm cool with. I speak to most of them, even the ones that I'd rather not deal with. It's called navigating the waters. I'm better at it now than I used to be. I have little things that I do to make this existence easier to bear. Reading being one. I read every day. At the moment, I'm reading a book by James Mishner titled Alaska. I have several of his books right now. There are epic sagas of whichever subject he's writing about. I don't hold the word genre or author. I do, however, shy away from romance novels and anything overly sentimental. I prefer Lewis Lamore Westerns as a whole to any other. The only exception being Larry McMurtry, author of Lonesome Dove and related titles. And odd though it may be, I often reread books. Not just any book is worth rereading. It has to be some kind of amazing to read more than once. Some, like Lewis Lamore, McMurtry, James Cabell, George R. R. Martin, I've read as many as five times each. The Bible stands paramount as the book of all books. I've been reading it for more than 40 years. It used to be just the King James Version, but now it's the English Standard Version. The radio is a major way to stay occupied. I'm not a sports fan, but I'm a news junkie. I keep up with the world news, politics, and whatever talk shows that I find of interest. I also listen to Christian programming as well. I'm not always in agreement with everyone's interpretation of Scripture. There are plenty of people willing to distort the Bible or the Quran or what have you to fit their ideology. My positions can be changed on secondary issues. On the fundamentals of Christianity and God's Word, no change can conceivably occur. And I take comfort in this. And few people can be relied on by trusting God for my salvation and my peace of mind. As many guys here will attest, I'm partial to coloring pencils and coloring books. I often have the radio on while I color in cartoon characters or nature scenes. It's relaxing. I look at the page, decide what my color scheme will be, change my mind, decide what it be, change my mind, then put something on it. Music is another way I keep saying. Usually it's metal music, but it can be country or old school rap. Last but not least, I write. I turn my loneliness, heartbreak, and other emotions into poems. I feel like my best poems were written when my little magpie flew away. As if I'm able to turn my raw emotion into verses that transcend time. I could be mistaken. I think I have a flair for the well-written verse. Above all of these pastimes and hobbies goes love. The love of family and friends is the glue that holds everything else together. People come and go through my life. Some stay for a while, some are constant, and sadly, some remain absent. I admit that I have contemplated suicide. For the record, I am not suicidal now. But the thoughts are like some grotesque toy to be taken out and played with when everything's bad. I've had some really bleak times. 
tears of pain, heartache, and frustration damn near drown me more than once. However, I pull through. Maybe the next time, there will be a next time, I'll go under and fail to rise again. I'm not giving up. I still intend to fight the darkness as I can do no less. The end.